Greenwood can just make their way to the back or whatever. Before we, before I start the video, um, are you doing a live? Yes, we're live. <laughs> well, I know. Okay, I just wasn't sure if we were live right now. We're live right now. Okay, so I, I want to do one of those little uh, warning, uh, pre-video warnings that there are images on this video that may be uncomfortable for those people who are uncomfortable with us feeding our cats whole prey. There are images of whole prey being done on the video, so just beware. You may want to close your eyes or do something else. This video is going to be an ever-changing process of videos, so this is the first, well actually it's probably like the 10th edit, but um, okay, so that's two. <laughs> the um, three. The process will change. I'll edit it as we go, as things change in food prep. And even since we shot the videos, things have changed. And during the video, I am like the, the best quick change artist that you will ever see in your life. Because I go from blonde hair to brown hair to ponytails to hair down. It's like, the, it's like quick change heaven. It's like unbelievably how fast it is. So a couple of things I want to remind everybody out when you are doing food prep, when there are new feeding sheets given to you for food prep, please look at those food sheets. Don't assume that everything is the same just because I printed a new one. Sometimes I do print a new one just because it got all grody from being out and it needs to be new. Most of the times I'm reprinting them because we've made diet changes. Sometimes I will just change one little thing on that diet sheet just to see if you're looking at the diet sheet. So I really need you guys to pay attention when you're out feeding on your routes and you're making food prep to pay attention to all the whole thing, not just the totals at the bottom of the sheets. I'm going to start the video. And then after the video, I'll go over, I printed some sheets out so we can talk about the different line items on them, what the different colors mean. I don't really go over that a lot in the video, but I'll hand sheets out for you guys to look at and we can talk about what the different colors mean and how to look at them. food 
out to them in the evening so that we can make sure that on any given day they eat a certain specified ounces or pounds to maintain their body weight because they are getting older and they do get a little pickier as they get older. So on the special diet sheet, um, like I said, that is all the cats that have special dietary needs. Whether it's the fact that they're really old and they're having issues with teeth, they've had a lot of teeth pulled, so they need everything cut up, they need it to be a, um, a soft food diet, so it's ground diet, ground meats, or if they just are having a hard time chewing up the bones and stuff, so we just cut them up into smaller pieces so they can just pick them up and swallow them. We do have a few cats that are, um, they're younger cats, but they have issues. They've had issues with swallowing other things. They chewed up their enrichment or something, so they've had issues with their um, intestines. So they don't get any more bones, they don't get any fur, so they get cut up diets. Um, as soft food, no fur, no bones. So they're not really on a special diet because they're old, just because they have special dietary needs physically. We also have a Serval Sheena, who for some reason cannot process red meats. Um, the chicken, she doesn't, she can't eat chicken in the sense of the chicken quarters and the chicken breasts and that kind of thing. She doesn't seem to process it or our mush or our red. She will eat it because she likes it, she wants to eat it, but then um, within like 15 minutes she throws it back up. So her diet now consists of fish. She has been able to maintain whole prey, so she does eat the rats and she does eat whole one day chicks. But so now we pretty much feed her with um, fish fillets, different kind of fish fillets and shrimp, in which we add a supplement, a dietary supplement to her food. So I will explain that when I get ready to prepare, actually prepare her diet. So the other routes are broken up um, into different sections. We have front, center, back, and outback. Um, also, so on the feeding sheets again, it has the section, all of the cats, the species of the cat, the cat name, and then it lists all of the things that they need to have. What size mush to feed them, how many quarters do they get, how many thighs do they get, if they get red, what size red. And on the special diet sheet at the bottom, when people are making up food prep, it tells you when you're cutting up red meat, what size the red meat needs to be based on the cat and what it says on their diet sheet. So a leopard red is one pound, a small leopard is 11 to 12 ounces, a lynx is eight ounces, a serval is four ounces, and a bobcat is 2.5 ounces. So you take that into account when you are making up the diets and weighing them for any particular cat. So also then, um, the cats also two days a week get whole prey. So the small cats will get rats, the larger animals will get either a small, medium, or large rabbit. And that diet will show up later. You'll see how we prepare the whole prey diets. Today we're gonna specifically talk about uh, special diets, show the size that we need to cut them up in, and the buckets and how we get them prepared and ready to go for, um, to feed them. So here we have, if you can see, we have all uh, different sizes of containers. And on each container on the lid is cat's name. So based on what the special diet sheet says for each individual cat, we will pull their bucket and we'll cut up their meat. And what you do for that is you're gonna turn the scale on. And on this board, behind us, this board where you see all the writing, that's where we make notes on any given day for anything that's going on that's last minute or an ongoing thing that everybody needs to see all the time. I have put the weights of each of these bowls on the board up here so that when you're weighing them and you're trying to calculate out the weight that goes in the bowl, you can put the bowl on and you can tear it, um, you can tear it out to zero and then put the actual weight on it so that when it goes out and they bring it back, it will give you exactly the weight that each cat ate on the ones that we are trying to maintain a certain amount of food on a weekly basis. So today the diet is, we are preparing, it's a Friday, so I'm preparing diets for Saturday. Saturday is our short feed day which means we, um, they mostly
mostly, most of the cats will just get mush. Uh, mush is our ground diet that is um, ground, up, uh, ground up beef with bones and internal organs, and it is ground up into a hamburger type consistency. And we, for lack of a better word, we call it mush. It's a lot easier to say carnivore feed or carnivore diet every time. So we just call it mush. So Saturdays are short feed day and most everybody gets just mush. Um, some of our smaller, some of our little cats and some of our bigger cats, are, again, that are on a restricted diet and we have to maintain a certain amount of food for them every day, will get additional food besides just the mush. So that's what we're going to prepare today. I have uh, cut up uh, Sheena's fish and a good size for Sheena is to be about what we would call like a sugar cube size. She's a very hungry little girl, she eats very well, and she gobbles her food. So you want it to be at least a sugar cube size, not too much bigger than that. So I've cut her fillets up, and they're in her bowl. She's also getting some shrimp. The shrimp comes frozen, so I just kind of thaw it out, and it comes with a tail. So you do want to just kind of twist that tail off at the end of, the end of it, and throw the tail away, and then just put the shrimp in her bowl. So next, we are going to do her special she gets her little balance it powder and to mix it all up to make sure it gets mixed up we mix it with corn oil <coughs> so her balance it powder is going to be two and three eighths teaspoons so i have a teaspoon so i'm just going to sprinkle two teaspoons on there and then three eighths so i have a little eight And because she's on just a fish diet, she needs this balance of powder because it's like giving her a multivitamin type thing. And then she gets a half a tablespoon of corn oil. So I'm going to put a half a tablespoon of corn oil, pour it in there. And I'm going to put her lid on. I'm just going to swirl it around so it gets all mixed up. So just mix it up really good. And that's what it looks like. So she is all ready to go. We're done with those. Please clean these all off. Don't leave nasty handprints all over them. Why is the most important thing to tell so that they stay clean and don't uh, attract ants. So I have cut up all of the special diets that I need to cut up. And I'm gonna show you, this is uh, for Armani. The leopards and the cougars that you cut up for special diets, their pieces need to be about two inches in size. So about like, you know, to the first or second joint of your finger in that type of size. And then um, she gets mush and she gets pork. For Little Feather, I have cut her pieces up. She really has a hard time eating. So she needs little tiny little pieces like the size of the tip of your little finger is what she needs to get fed. And she likes her food fresh. For Chitaro, Chitaro um, has a skin condition thing that we do this. Uh, <laughs> It's a 365. It says it reduces dander and shedding, but it's uh, like a oil thing, and it helps their coat. So what you want to do is you want to shake it up really well because it is an oil-based product that has stuff added to it, and the oil will be on top, and then the stuff will settle to the bottom. And if you don't shake it up, then you don't get a good mix. And as you can see, it's kind of slimy. So what you want to do is one good push into the container and then turn the top to lock it back in place. So then you just want to mix it up really good into his mush. So that's really the only reason why Chitaro has a bucket is because he needs this uh, oil blend put into his mush. So he gets a bucket just so we can make sure that he's getting his his supplement added to it. So before I put that lid on, I am going to actually go wash this and clean up my counter, 
And I also am gonna like wipe this container down. Okay, so all of my special diets are done. I've got Banshee as my last one, and again, cut it up into small pieces for him. And that is all of my special diets. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these bucketed into smaller buckets and put them in the cooler in their designated routes. A reminder for special diets in the morning when you go out and feed the cats their special diets, whatever you bring back after you weigh it needs to be thrown away and the container cleaned out and ready to go for the next day. The coordinators will cut up fresh food to take out for additional feedings later in the day. The next thing that we want to do that goes out with the diet is Cosequin. And Cosequin is the same type of stuff that humans take. It's just in a powder form to make it easier for us to mix it in with cat's food. And that is going to be dosed out by doses. We have a list of cats and the size scoop that they get and how to dose it, how to dose it out. Please always wear gloves when you are doing the Cosequin because it is a type of medication for the cats and so you want to try to keep it clean. So there's two types of scoops in this bucket. There's um, a white scoop that on one side says five pounds, on the other side says 10 pounds, and then there is a blue scoop. So on the sheet, it actually says the cat's name and then the scoop size that you want to add to it. So in Angie's case, Angie and Little Feather and the smaller cats, like the Bobcats and the Servals, get a number five white scoop. So that means use the white scoop and you're gonna use the five pound side of the thing. And then the bigger ones, like the cougars and the leopards, says number 10 white, so you would flip it over to the 10 pound size. And that's a level spoonful scoop. So the bigger cats, like Nikki Lion and Joseph, use the blue scoop, and it will say one and a half blue. So level one and then a half of a blue scoop, and the same for Nikki. She is one and three quarters, so it would be almost full, but not quite. These are the additional supplements that we use for our cats. This is a fish oil supplement that gets broken up and mixed into the mush. This is a joint care supplement for cats with arthritis. Small cats get one chew, medium cats, meaning cougars and leopards, get four. And if we were to do one of the bigger cats, they would get 15. <laughs> this is Cosequin. It gets labeled uh, individual bags and dosed out into bags to go out on the feeding routes. All of these supplements will be laying on the counter in food prep in the morning, ready for the route leaders to uh, take and put with their feeding routes. Uh, talk about uh, red and chicken necks and chicken drums and the sizes of the meat. On the bottom of the special diet sheet, there is a list where it says red meat sizes. Leopards are one pound, small leopards are 11 to 12 ounces, Lynx are eight ounces and bobcat servals are four ounces. And I will also show you a tiger red and a small tiger. Uh, so for a bobcat, a bobcat is four ounces. 4.6, so it's a little big, so it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be exactly four ounces, but as close to four ounces as you could get. So that would be a good bobcat ready. So lynx is eight ounces, let's see. What so we're gonna just go with them. So, these <laughs> bobcat, a uh, small leopard is 11 to 12, a small leopard, a leopard is a pound. Okay, so that's pretty close. Okay, so we've got a leopard, a small Food leopard, is not an exact a lynx, <laughs> and a bobcat. A small tiger is a whole tiger, a whole shank, yeah. but cut a long way. Oh, yeah. Tiger? Small tiger, <laughs> bobcat, lynx, small leopard, leopard. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on the tiger buckets. And what we have here are Joseph and Cameron and each individual has its own little sheet on it with their name. 
And what they get on any given day is you can see Sunday, Wednesday, Monday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays. Um, it tells you what they get on any given day um, right on their bucket so that you can look at it and make up their diets. We have a couple of special diets for um, Zeus. Zeus is on eye drops for his bad eye, and he gets those three times a day, um, a.m., noon, and p.m. So he gets, they each get a little bit of their food off and on during the day so that they get their entire diet by the time the end day is over, but they get it broken up um, so that we can administer their meds in an effective manner. And then we're just going to do a couple of regular buckets. We're going to do actually Andre and Amanda, just so you can see the difference in um, a little girl's diet and a little boy's diet. And their diet is going to consist of mush and red meat. And then we've got a whole bucket of chicken quarters over here that the girls are going to start putting together in their diet. Zeus, we're going to cut up his meat a little bit different this time. We're going to actually cut his diet up into, um, we're going to take the red and cut it up into two small tigers, like the long cut, and then you're going to cut those long cuts in half so that his pieces are more elongated instead of just sliced like we normally do to make it easier for us to give him his food with tongs. to get for chicken? Four quarters. Okay. Okay, so we've got some boneless chicken breast that we're going to add to uh, Zeus's red diet. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut those just in half, just like that, and then split them up between the three bags. Okay. So the mush for the tigers is always given in based on bags. So it's based on a quarter bag or a half bag or softball or something like that. But for the Tigers, it's either a half a bag or a quarter of a bag. And typically, the Tigers that are eating well and like the mush get a half a bag. The mush is, of course, where you get all of your vitamins and your nutrients. Um, it's really the best part for them to eat. The chicken and the red is good for them, but not so much vitamin-wise. It's more for bone and filler. All right, so they've got their mush and they've got their quarters for tomorrow. So we can put those back in the cooler. So Joseph and Cameron are our male lions and male lions are persnickety and they like certain things a certain way and they're very picky about their food and how they receive it. So we have to cut their, we have to cut their um, chicken quarters up for them because they like it in smaller pieces. So we're going to cut their stuff up, and they only get a little bit of mush because they're not crazy about the mush either. So that's basically how we get the tiger buckets are all done. I'm not going to show every tiger bucket because it's kind of pointless now that we got a list. And um, so you use the basics and you understand how it's done. Okay, as you can see, once again, I finished what I was doing. I cleaned up my area, and it's all nice and fresh for the next person coming in behind. I have pulled out what I need now to finish up our routes. I've got a bucket for front, a bucket for center, a bucket for back, and Jamie's bucket. So what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to look at the sheet, and we are doing Wednesdays, and it tells me I need 12 boneless thighs. So now you guys see how I do food prep so fast. <laughs> Okay, so there is my boneless thighs for my littles. And now it's also telling me that I need quarters for some of my small cats. So the links in below will go into the small bucket, and the bigger cats, like the cougars and leopards, will go in a separate bucket. So I'm just going to add one, two, two quarters for the other two links. Right, that's my small cats. Now I need to get a bucket to put my big cats in, and I need two quarters for my cougars and leopards. Okay, that's for my cougars, and now it says that I need one bag of mush, which I already have pulled and put in the bottom of this bucket. There's a whole bag of mush there. 
going to take these two buckets and I'm going to put them down in this bucket. And it says I need a bobcat red for Zimba. So I'm going to get my cutting board and a knife and I'm going to get some red for Zimba. Okay, got a little piece of red. It's going right in this bucket with the thighs for the um, for Zimba. So we're going to take this bucket, we're going to put it away into the cooler with the feeding sheet and the front mount is all done and ready to go. So next we're going to do center. So center tells me on Wednesday I need 16 and a half, but of those 16 and a half, I actually need one, two, three halves and then a half cut up. So I am going to need to take my thighs and I'm going to need to cut up um, four thighs. So I'm going to find one that's, find some that are a little bigger so the ones that are getting half don't get completely chipped. Okay, so there's two. Let's put that in as a half. Regular halves. And then we need to cut up, which means I need a little bag for um, Diablo because he likes his mud his cut out. I'm just going to cut him up some, some chicken real quick. So here we go. That's the like, Diablos and then the other halves. And so I'm actually going to do 15. We need three small tigers and two, four, five chicken quarters for our bigger cats. So there's five, and then we need three small tigers. Thank you. 
So it tells you that the pool day is the day of the week that it actually is. And then in yellow is the day we're actually going to be feeding that food out. So the important thing to remember is to make sure to pull what exactly it says to pull on that day. So we make sure that we have enough food for the diet that we're going to be preparing that night. So in the cooler, how you lay everything out when you pull it out to thaw is the mush can go over here. It can go on a tray or not on a tray. Either way is fine as long as it's turned with the opening of the bag up so as much of the blood stays in the bag as possible to keep the mush um, soft and moist. Next, we're going to have the containers that we keep open, chicken and open red in. One container is for red, one container is for the chicken. Next, we have chicken thighs, chicken breast, chicken quarters get thawed over in this area. Again, whatever you have left over of the chicken thighs, chicken breast, chicken quarters when you're done, need to go in this container so that they have a, 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 a lid on them. Over on the shelves, the things that go on the shelves to thaw are going to be your chicks and your fish and then your trays of med meats. Also on the trays, you're going to have your uh, pork or your lamb that we're thawing for uh, specialty meats. Again, you need to pull it, do a little paper plate on it with the date. Anytime you're pulling meat, it should be dated, and no meat should stay in the cooler more than two days. Everything should rotate every two days to get fed out so everything is fresh. We already pulled our whole prey for Thursday because the rabbits, the large rabbits, do take multiple days to really thaw out. So we pull our rabbits. On this side, you have your big sheaths of red. Again, it's all on trays, and it is dated for the date that it was pulled out. And there should always be, every day, at least eight bags of red, minimum. Some days we need more, because we use red every day for diets, and we use red every day for meds and operants. So we should always have a minimum of eight. Some days we need nine or ten, depending on if it's a red day diet, we will use more red. Those go on shelves, again, with paper plates with dates. All meat should be thawed in the cooler, either on the table or on the shelves. That includes the big turkeys that we take out on Thursday for Cameron and Mac. Um, they should be, all meat should be taken out enough in advance that it can thaw in the cooler depending on how many days it takes to thaw it out, but all thawing should be done in the cooler. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the med tray. We have one day old chicks up here that we use for meds, so we want to make sure that we always have at least 15 to 20 chicks on a tray every day. And then in all these containers, it's labeled, like this is chicken tenders, this is lamb. All of the meds meat on this tray is all labeled. Yep. But all these containers need to be checked in the morning after it, the morning meds are done and see if anything needs to be pulled and thawed. And then checked again after the PM meds go out to see what was used for PM meds and replenished. When you empty a container, please wash it and dry it and put it back on the shelf and make sure that you pull additional food and lay it on top of that bucket. So as soon as it's thawed, you can empty the bag and put it into the bucket. Sheet. So I have now done the substitution sheet. So if you happen to run out of chicken or red or anything like that, I've told you about how much each particular piece of a diet would weigh and giving you something that you can substitute it for. people are asking as so I was writing them down. Oh, I got you. Okay. Um, everybody's scared to death that we're feeding horses. <laughs> <laughs> um, our, our mush is uh, beef mixed with ground 
vitamins and bone and that type of thing. I have made some copies of some sheets of things that we use in food prep that have to do with cleaning and stuff. If you guys want to, some of you, I mean, I know you guys have all seen it, but if you want to pass it around, it's just an example of the food prep pull sheet. There is also, there is also a, a food prep and cooler cleaning instruction sheet. It was hanging on the door of the cooler. I think it might still be there. But it just reminds you of how you need to clean the cooler and how often the cooler needs to be cleaned. So please make sure you're reading that. There is also a checklist um, for each day for cleaning food prep, cooler cleaning, cooling, uh, who does it, put your initials on there, the week of, who did the blood bucket, dip, drip, drip buckets, <laughs> the meat table, the back wall, the side walls, down drains, sweeping the floor, all of that needs to be filled out every day. Again, here are, you guys can just kind of pass these around. I printed like four, four of them that you can like one per thing and pass them down. That's, it's a, an example of the special diet sheets showing you the cat's name, the ounces for each of their diets, um, the type of different diets that they get. So one thing I do want to go over on the, um, on the list, you want to kind of pass those around and look at them. On the feeding sheets, they're kind of color coded. And so I just thought I would go over with you guys just in case some of you that are feeding haven't realized by now that the, what the color coding is. If it's yellow, if the cat's name is highlighted in yellow, what does that mean? Feeding. They're on the feeding tour. So on... Um, it's good where we can see it in the light. Um, so on Saturday, Fridays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, if you're on a regular route, you're not going to feed those cats uh, because they're going to be on a feeding tour. So the next thing you want to look at is the cats that are highlighted in red. What does that mean? Locked out. Locked out or separated. Yep, locked out. The locked out of their lockouts. That's going to be your lions, your tigers, your cougars, your leopards, and certain small cats that are a little bit more reachy and aggressive at feeding time. That means that before you put any food in their lockout, their lockout door should be closed. The next thing you want to look at is um, the green SD. What does that mean? <laughs> Okay, that's the little sheet that means they should have a little bucket with their name on it with their diets in it. So on the actual sheet, there are some boxes that have green in them. What's the green mean? Right. Okay, so I have, uh, actually there's a couple of different colors of green because I never remember which one I pick each time. So. But if it's green, <laughs> if it's green, it means cut it up. And always look at the bottom. There's a list at the bottom that says special diet and it has the cat's names. In addition to having special diet on the side of their names under their mush, it also lists them at the bottom of your feeding sheet. So you should always have a bucket on your route for those. And then in the bottom of the sheet across here, it says Sunday, Wednesday, Monday, Friday, Saturday. Where's Tuesday, Thursday? <laughs> I don't know. This says Saturday. Okay, we'll have to fix that. Yeah, I know. We'll have to fix that. But anyway, so these are totals at the bottom. So when you're counting the routes for, yeah, I know you just started. When you're count, when you're double checking the feed feeding routes that someone's done, and you're checking everything, you should be counting along the bottom for that day of the week to make sure, and then just double checking to make sure you have all your special diets. <coughs> And on center route, I have added for personality and little dove, they are both getting cut up diets with no mush. Well, no little dove gets mush, personality is not getting mush, but so they're getting a certain amount of cut up meat, so I've added that on there, how much they're supposed to actually get. So you'll need to put them in a little bag with their names on them. Okay, so anybody have questions? Julia. Why are some of the names in red and some of them are in black? Okay, so who can tell me why the names are in red? Locked out. Locked out. <laughs> 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 
Okay, Sarah? Um, do you want to emphasize the chicken bucket is the one with the holes in the bottom? Yes, the big white container that we put our red, the red meat and the chicken meat in, the chicken one has cracks in the bottom of it so that the chicken juice drains out of the bottom of it because the chicken juice will not stay as fresh as the actual meat. Um, I have some pictures of the actual, there was brought up that maybe some of you that are vegan and vegetarian and don't really deal with meat, now that you're making food prep, is, is there people that don't know the difference between a chicken thigh and a chicken breast? Are there people that just don't want to admit that they don't know the difference between a chicken thigh and a chicken breast? Probably. Show Would you like me to show you the pictures yeah. of what all the meat is? Yes. Okay. Uh, before you go there, we got some questions. Okay. Uh, they want to know why corn oil for Sheena when people say that corn oil is so bad for animals. That was actually what was recommended um, by uh, the company that does the thing and the vet to mix it with corn oil. And I'm guessing it, it's because she can keep it down, whereas you wouldn't have put fish oil on top of all that fish because it would be too much fish. That was, what, that was the instructions that were given by the vet. How often are cats fed? Cats are fed every day. And how many pounds a day? It varies from cat to cat. No, I mean for the whole place. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> you got her to curse. Um, gosh, it's been so long. We did a whole video on how much food we feed out each day. It used to be five hundred pounds a day. Yeah, five to six hundred pounds a day. Yeah. How many cats do you have? Seventy-nine. Okay, now you can show pictures. Okay. Depending on the time. Yeah, depending on the time of year. Depending on the time of year. In the summer, they don't they don't tend to eat as much because it's too hot. And if the lines are heating. All right, I'm gonna find this out for a second so I can get my. <laughs> we prep that much bucket, food. Right? They may not eat it. Huh? We You're gonna fix Cameron's bucket where it says Cameron's a lion, a tiger. I was moving things around and um, I just didn't. Oh, hey, Gil, while we're talking about the Tupperware containers, can we talk about not putting bags of meat in the Tupperware containers? Yes, when you guys defrost the meat for the meds meat and you've got it laying on top of the container waiting it for it to thaw, once it's thawed, empty it out of the bag into the actual container. Don't just shove the bag down into the container. The clean container. For the clean, clean yes, clean, washed, and dried container. Yes, and take the ground beef and the ground turkey out of the little tube and just the meat in the container. And in the big red container, just the meat, not the bag of red meat, just the meat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and save the blood. And save the blood for enrichment. <laughs> You want to talk about what you guys do with the blood that you take off of the meat while she's getting her pictures ready? Sure. Oh, I, I will talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite subject. <laughs> we really need that blood because it we take it and we put it ratio-wise into different sized cups. And then we add water to it and we refreeze it. And that way it's a nice tasty treat for the cats on a hot day. And it also, we have cats who, um, you know, they're stopping eating so much or drinking so much and we want to make sure we keep them hydrated. It makes them a little more interested in drinking a little bit more if it's got some blood in it. Yay. Yeah. Ooh, what is that, Gail? This, <laughs> this is a chicken, a boneless chicken thigh. It's a little bit smaller and a little bit thinner than the, the breast. It's fattier. And it's, yeah, it's a little fattier. This is a chicken quarter, a boned chicken quarter. This is a, this is a, what we call a boneless, skinless butterfly breast. So if it says one breast, you want to slice that down this, like right here, and that would be one, and that would be one. And they're big. When we get our butterfly breasts, they are really good sized chicken breasts. And they're very big, thick pieces of meat. Where do you get the chicken? 
Our chicken comes from a USDA inspected supplier. We get all of our meat, all of our meat is inspected. It's human grade, it's basically human grade. Other than our mush, all of our meat is human grade meat. It's not the expired Walmart diet. Is no, it? it is not the expired Walmart food, no. Um, this is a little piece of pork. Pork is a, it's a, considered a white meat but it's more pinkish looking than the red or the chicken. So if you're trying to identify it, it's more pink. This is a sheep of red. This is the turkey. The turkey comes in little fillets and they're very pink. This is a chicken fillet, like, like the little chicken fingers that you get if you go out to eat if you eat chicken. These are like little chicken fillets. And for some reason, I don't know why, but it's a chicken breast fillet. The cats think it tastes different than just giving them chicken breast. I don't know why, but it's, they think it is different. So the they'll- ten, It's the chicken tender, which is the underneath yeah. the breast next right. to the bone. Which yeah, the they sauce, really, yeah, they, it, the it must taste different because the they chicken. love the fillets better than just the chicken breast. Okay, so this is um, lamb. So the lamb, if you, if you smell the lamb, it has a very distinct flavor, smell. <laughs> it does have a very distinct flavor, but it definitely has a different smell. But just because it's different doesn't mean that it's bad, but it definitely smells different than the beef. Like gamey or what? Um, a little gamier, yes. So Please don't it, taste the raw lamb. Just don't taste the raw lamb, right? And so, if you'll notice on the pork and the lamb, both they have that uh, that oh, layer that of that layer of fat. Yes. All right. So we are back to the chicken. Most cats don't like the fat. Yeah. Which is it really what they the they really need to have because some of them are very skinny, and they really should have the fat. All right. Uh, any other questions about any of the stuff or just in general? Yes. This is mainly probably for our camera audience because we get asked this a lot at the gift shop and stuff is if we take food donations and why or why not? Okay, that's, we do not take donated food because one, we have to have USDA inspected food so we have to make sure that it is. And uh, we do get people that want to donate food that's been in, they, you know, it's been in their freezer forever and it's, they're not gonna want it. They don't want it anymore because maybe it has freezer burn. Well, it's past its date. It's, so we don't feed our cats expired freezer burn food because our cats are older, they really do have special dietary needs and we want to make sure that we give our cats the best care and the best food that we can. And the only way we can do that is to supply our own food so that we know that they are getting the best meat that we can give them. And we won't take roadkill or your dead horse or Right, anything. we don't, yeah, horse, we, horses should not, it, we don't do horses because horses <laughs> get all kinds of antibiotics and all kinds of stuff that is just really not safe for human or um, cats to eat. And so no, we will not, we will not take expired horses. <laughs> well, they are expired. Yeah, they are expired. <laughs> Any other questions? Comments? Remarks? Jokes yeah. back there in the back? <laughs> Morgan? <laughs> what do you think we could do to keep some of the food fresher longer? Because I feel like there's times when it spoils and we're, we're you know, we may be um, throwing out food that we could have done something to keep it fresh or longer. Is there something, do you think? Well, that's kind of an everyday kind of process for me, is just making sure that the count, as we change cat's diet, that I change the takeout sheet to make sure that we have enough with a lot of the, even the bigger cats, some of the tigers that are having dental issues or whatever, if we're changing them from boned quarters to boneless, 
then I got to make sure that we take out less, you know, so it's just an everyday kind of process. And it's always helpful if the people that are making the diets on a regular basis are saying, hey, we had like a whole bag of chicken quarters left over on this day, or maybe we didn't have enough chicken thighs out for this day so that we can adjust that takeout sheet um, so that we don't have that excess. Yes. Another one for our camera audience because you get this a lot. Um, can cats eat fruits and vegetables? <laughs> we, Is the question can, can or should they? Should they? Should, they? Oh, <laughs> should they? Cats are carnivores by nature, and while we have gotten cats from private owners that fed their cats vegetables, in the long run, they were not overly healthy cats. They tended to be very overweight and not, in general, their blood work and stuff came back not great. So cats are carnivores. Mm -hmm. they are meat, they're meant to eat meat. Exclusively. Exclusively, yes. Can, can domestic cats be vegan? <laughs> domestic cats, a cat is a cat is a cat, regardless of whether it's a domestic cat or a, I know a lot of the processed cat foods that we feed our domestic cats do have a lot of grain in them as filler. And while they can survive on that diet, it's probably really not the best diet for them, especially if they have physical, any kind of physical issues. There are better more um, meat-centered diets that would be better for them. And you can feed your domestic cat a raw food diet. Mm -hmm. It is possible they can, you can adapt them to eating a raw food diet. And if you have an overweight cat and you gradually get them onto a whole raw food diet, they will lose weight and they will be healthier. But it's a gradual process. You can't just stop their food and put them on a raw diet. You have to get with your vet and come up with a plan. But you can get your cats, your domestic cats, to eat a raw food diet. One of the questions is, and I'm not sure how what quite they mean, can you set up a place for the leavings away from the cats to keep the vultures away? Oh, you mean the, that they're, they're probably meaning the food that they don't eat. Um, we feed, the reason why, one of the reasons why we feed in the morning is so that the food is picked up immediately and not left. We used to feed in the evenings and the food would be left all night long and we would clean in the next morning. So we've since shifted to feeding in the morning, which means they get fed and within like, well, they the keepers, the feeders go back immediately after they finish the route feeding. And if the cats have walked away from their lockouts, they shut the doors and they pick up ex excessive food and then immediately the cleaners go out and clean. So our, our cats are cleaned and fed first thing in the morning. Anybody else? You're so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was great, Gail. Yeah, thanks.